This is Don Gossett. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It is easy to think of praising God as something reserved for church on Sunday morning. Today, Don Gossett shares the scripture, how God is present with us in a very real way when we praise Him. Now here's radio teacher and friend Don Gossett sharing how praise opens the door to God's power. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'm humbly grateful that many years ago, the Lord Jesus gave me a personal revelation of the power of praising Him. I cannot give you all the background of how that happened, but it was a very realistic experience. And through the years, I have been blessed by the writings of many men and women of God who have addressed this subject and is ministered in my heart. I think of my friend Merlin Carruthers, Lieutenant Colonel Merlin Carruthers. He wrote an awesome book called Prison to Praise. He was uh, in violation of harmony laws and wound up in prison. But it was there the truth of praise broke forth through his heart. And he wrote this book that has been used by God to minister to many, many people. Some years ago, Merlin Carruthers came up to Vancouver to be our speaker in a praise conference. And I'll always esteem the blessing of knowing that man and the reality of it. Well, through the years, God has enabled me to come in contact with other people who, like Merlin Carruthers, received the revelation of the power of praise. And I have devoured their books. I've studied them, not because I don't know anything about praising the Lord, but I appreciate what God gives us to various people. And of late, I've been reading from a couple of books written by Dr. Michael Youssef, who is a pastor in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, he came from Egypt, where he was born and raised. And I just have loved very much his book about praising the Lord with passion for uh, Dr. Youssef wrote these words, and I quote, He said, If King David were with us today, I have no doubt, he would sound this clarion call to every believer, using these very words, Praise the Lord. He would encourage us to clap our hands, to make a joyful noise to Almighty God with musical instruments, and to shout praises to the Most High. That's right, shout! And David wouldn't quietly stand before us, meekly offering this as a suggestion for us to consider. No, David would be animated. He would implore us to join him and all the saints of God in praising our Lord. And Dr. Youssef gave a bit of insight about his background over in Egypt, where he was raised. He said, uh, back in those days, it might seem a, a bit overwhelming to consider how our Christian brothers and sisters worship and praise God. But he said, now to help you see things from David's perspective, I'd like to just give you my background. And Dr. Youssef then shares about how, as a Middle Easterner, such as David, he would express his feelings when encountering the Lord. And thank God it was a beautiful experience with him and his uh, grandfather and his mother. They were all awesome praisers. They would devote hours, he said, every day to praising the Lord. So no wonder Dr. Youssef has such insight to this truth. It was practiced in his home so actively. And then we come back to the man David. He would express his feelings when encountering the Lord. And David would give more than just a casual uh, praise like you might give to some friend a word of uh, encouragement. But you can imagine that the praise, the expressions of joy and gladness, the words of honor in the life of Dr. Youssef and his family would far exceed the warm greetings exchanged by good friends. So you can understand why if David were here today, he would insist we put our hearts into praise of our God. If David walked into your worship service this Sunday, he wouldn't rest until everyone was on their feet, singing, playing instruments, dancing. And David would insist that we grant God the glory and honor and adoration that only he deserves, that we do it in humility and with passion. So if David were here, would you 
gladly heed his call to praise God with your entire being, with all that you are, all that you have, and all that you'll ever be every day of your life. Well, this has been my uh, experience in the main part, and I thank God, well, I'm not a perfectly example of David or Dr. Yusef or anyone else, but I've learned in this act of worship and praise that I can learn to believe in the goodness and greatness of God. I learned those years ago as I began to study the scripture how God wants us to praise him, not because God needs or craves in any case uh, our flattery, no, because God knows that praise will create joy and thankfulness to us. Now, I encounter Christians who regard praise as something we do for God. They believe that when we praise God, we somehow bring him benefit. Well, in truth, we praise God because in doing so, we put ourselves into a position to receive benefit and blessing from him. Praise results in great changes in us and those we love and the world around us. Praise produces spiritual growth and development. Praise is the great engine that drives the church forward, resulting in greater faith as we pray. And we have a more powerful witness and amazing victories in the spiritual realm. That's what I want to emphasize, amazing victories in the spiritual realm. I've shared with you about my appreciation for the healing power of Jesus. It became such a vital part of my life when I was 18. It, with the end result was that it, my mother, who was a semi-invalid, embraced this wonderful truth of Jesus being the great physician. And she had an amazing victory in this realm. Not only the healing of her body, but most of all, the saving of her soul. Now, praise is not a program in which we manipulate God to answer our prayer requests. No. Praise flows naturally from our relationship of love and devotion to the Lord. You see, praise is more than an obligation, more than a simple spiritual exercise. Praise is the path that brings us near to God and His love, His power, and His grace. Praise brings us closer to the throne of God, to a more intimate relationship with our Creator, Savior, and Lord, and yes, to a more fulfilling life on this earth. I will always praise God that He opened my heart to embrace this wonderful truth. And every person I know in the depths of his or, or her heart seeks a life of fulfillment and joy. We are driven to know our reason for being here in this earth, and we want our lives to make a difference, to bring out something of lasting value. And as the saying goes, we don't want much. We want everything, at least everything that matters. And praise God, he is that everything. He, engave, he gives us a life of meaning, and we can simply focus on praising the Lord. That's why I'm such a almost a fanatic about coming here to this microphone and saying, people, join me as we praise and love our wonderful Lord. Not only does praise put us in a close communion with God, it also reveals things to us about ourselves. Praise opens our eyes to spiritual reality. Praise opens our hearts to the love and power of God and also to our desperate need for Him. You see, I consider praise is an adventure, an empowering adventure. In praising the Lord, we have a chance to really know who we are, and we then begin to experience the great mystery and power of God's work on earth as we learn to praise the wonderful Lord. And this is so remarkable. Now, just stop for a moment to consider this truth. Nobody can praise God exactly the way you do because no one else has had exactly your experience. No, no one has known God's present power in the same way you have. Nobody else will use the same combination of words and phrases to express their praise to God. No one else knows or will ever experience the same praise the way you do because he's a great God of variety. Now, your praise is your unique, your unique expression. Your way of praise reflects your relationship with the Lord. You that have followed this broadcast know that many years ago, the Lord led me to challenge people to participate with me in a very practical way. Now, as I said here a few moments ago, that there is such a variety of praising God. 
that no one else has the same experience maybe you have. But it, to embrace this truth and reality and invite people to participate with me in it, God led me to simply begin to say, people, join me as we praise the Lord ten times. Now I could give you a full Bible study about the significance of the word uh, ten times, but God wants to be praised, and he wants you to be a participant in it. And I believe and praise God that this truth of praising the Lord ten times has had so many wonderful results. I have written whole books about the people who have simply practiced this truth. You see, it's no magic formula. It's no combination of words that somehow are overwhelming significant. No, it's God's ordained way. One of the ways we can praise him, I say it's a unique expression as we praise the Lord ten times. And I'm going to invite you to do that with me in a few moments here and let God be glorified. For your praise and my praise will fulfill part of your distinctive destiny as a uniquely created human being. Your praise to God is rooted in the very reason for your creation and your life on this earth. You say, well, Don, what is my purpose for life? Now, if we were to ask Paul that question, he would surely say again what he declares God in Scripture. I love Hebrews 13, 15, by Jesus, therefore. Let's offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That's the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. Thank you, Brother Paul, for that good word. Now, if we were to go ask the prophet Isaiah about what's the purpose of praising God, he'd remind us that God spoke this to all of his people. Listen to Isaiah 43, 21. This people I have formed for myself that they may proclaim my praise. That's why God created us, that we might show forth his praise. Now, let's ask Peter. Peter, what's the purpose of praise? And again, he might give us the purpose as set forth in 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, that you should show forth the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And now, most of all, what would we ask Jesus? Why we should praise him? Well, he might recall for us that day when he entered Jerusalem. Well, a great crowd shouted joyful praises to him, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Now the Pharisees admonished Jesus that he'd rebuke the people who are praising like that. And Jesus said, I tell you that if they'd keep quiet, the stones will cry out. So I don't know about you, but I certainly don't want any rock to do my praise to the Lord, nor to you. And so... Now, this is what I want to motivate you to do today. Stop what you're doing. Focus your attention on Jesus. And let's praise him together. And let's praise him ten times. Praise you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Don Gossett's new book is entitled Reaching Out, Touching Hearts. In gratitude for your love gift for Bold Bible Missions, ask for Don's new book, Reaching Out, Touching Hearts. Send your letter of support in Canada to Box 75120, White Rock, B.C., V4AOB1, or Box 2, Blaine, Washington, 98231. Once again, in Canada, write Box 75120, White Rock, B.C., V4AOB1, or Box 2, Blaine, Washington, 98231. And from all of us here at Bold Bible Missions, thank you.